Hello everyone, welcome to Native Mobile Bits. My name is Sachin and today we are going to start learning about Jetpack Compose. In this series we will learn how we can use Jetpack Compose in our Android projects. And in this first video we will learn some basics like what it is, why we need this and then we will create one very basic first application with Jetpack Compose. And if we search Jetpack Compose, so we will see that this is actually Android's modern toolkit to build native UI that means if you want to design any application layout or any screen inside our application we can use Jetpack Compose to do that but if you are already familiar with Android application development you may be wondering that I can use XML to do that right I can design the layout using XML so then why I should start learning or using Jetpack Compose right that is the big question so I will tell you in this video like why we need Jetpack Compose and what advantages it will bring to the table so the first and main important advantage of using Jetpack Compose is we can can do everything inside our application development using Kotlin. There will be only single language for everything which will be Kotlin and there will be no XML. So if you are familiar with Android application development you know that earlier we used to use XML for designing layouts right. Now when we start using Jetpack Compose we no need XML and there will be only Kotlin used for both code and uh, UI development as well. That means if we want to design any screen inside our application we can use Kotlin itself when we use Jetpack Compose inside our project and then there will be no need of XML. Now let's create one project using Jetpack Compose and let's observe how we are only using Kotlin inside that and there is no XML. So to create a project let's open Android Studio Bumblebee. So to create a new project click here and we need to choose this Compose activity. We need to select this and then we can name it as Jetpack Compose course and we can give the package name here here as we can just change this example to native mobile bits and then we can just finish this setup and it will create a project for us so Gradle is syncing right now it is just setting up our compose project so our project has been created and if you notice we don't have any layout folder over here in the left side we just have our main activity file this is one activity file and we don't have any layout and we don't even have here site content view which we used to have inside our previous implementation where we used to use XML layouts and if we check out any previous project where we used to have XML so you can see that activity has this site content view and it accepts a layout and we have all the XML code inside this and inside Jetpack Compose we don't have any of those and the second advantage of using Jetpack Compose is its declarative approach and this declarative approach is based on composition I will explain you in a minute what it is and before that let's go back a little and let's see what approach our older project used to follow so inside our older project where we used to have XML there was always a activity and uh, maybe a fragment and then there was respective XML and in there this XML will do whatever this respective activity will tell to do right so this was called imperative approach where activity was solely responsible for all the views which was present inside our XML class. So for example XML could have a button or a text view and then this activity will be responsible to add some click listener or to provide some data to this XML right. So for example let's see here is one tag and if we go to its respective activity so you can see that here we are just setting the value inside the activity for this respective text right. So this text is inside this XML file but this activity is responsible for setting the text or maybe some color so this was called imperative approach where XML was dependent on this activity so when we talk about Jetpack Compose there is no imperative approach and we follow this declarative approach and inside declarative approach inside Jetpack Compose instead of defining layout inside any XML layout file we take help of the composables. 
so everything every view like if you want to define a button or if you want to make a text on the screen that will be called as a composable so everything is a composable we will learn about composable later in this series but for now you can understand that composable is kind of a view so inside jetpack compose everything is a composable so a parent composable for example if you talk about there is one screen right so that is screen can be a parent composable so that screen can have later on multiple other different different views maybe a button or a text view so those text view and button can be used as this child composable inside our parent composable right so this is a declarative approach and these composables will be taking the input like what view we need to show and then what data we need to fill in inside that view so we no need to take help of xml to define view and then later on add functionality via activity inside activity itself we can define a composable and then inside a composable we can write the functionality as well so if we go to our newly created project so we can notice that here we have different different composable this surface is a composable for example and it takes some data like it is taking some parameters and these parameters are having the required data for this composable so here we are passing the color and some modifier we will learn all of these things shortly for now you can understand that jetpack compose follows this declarative approach where we have composables and these composables also have the data necessary to fill up the view right inside the activity itself and the next advantage of using jetpack compose is it has very less code for example if we want to make any list then we need to use either recycler view or list view then we need to make adapters and so on but inside jetpack compose it's straightforward and we will see how we can code the same thing in very less code in further videos and the next advantage is that view and logic both are at one place because here we have our composables and we can tell what this composable is going to do like this is one very basic composable and inside this we are just printing something like we are just making one text view so we can specify the view with the logic at the same place in the activity class itself in jetpack compose and the next advantage is it fixed so many older android ui bugs there was views which was having some bugs in the older ui like edit text or maybe drop down so it fixes all of those now we can see that we have lot of good reasons to start with jetpack jetpack compose now let's see what are the major differences jetpack compose has so the first and very very important difference between older xml and new jetpack compose is older android ui system where we was using xml a lot it was completely based on inheritance concept and when we talk about inheritance that means their all the child view was taking some form of knowledge from its parent view like there was some classes which was extending any parent classes so this was happening inside old xml approach and to show you this let's quickly go to the project and this is one older style project where we are using xml so let's go to this layout file and here we have some views so for example let's see we have one text view right so let's go to the declaration of this text view and if we see so this text view is a class and this is extending the android view class right so this is the inheritance concept here in practice and this text view is extending this base view class and if we check the functionality of any other view for example let's say we have something like edit text and if we go to the declaration of this edit text here we can see this edit text is extending the text view and then again this text view is extending view class so this entire ui system in older xml is based on inheritance okay and on the other hand inside jetpack compose jetpack compose is utilizing the concept of composition and this is like we have one composable then we can have several composable inside it and if we go to the project which we recently created here we have jetpack compose so if we go to the declaration of this surface composable we can see this is a composable first of all and then this is a function it's not a class 
so this is a function it takes some attributes some parameters over here and it does not extend any other class this is independent unit so this is a independent unit and this return as some form of composable we will explore more about this later but we can see that this is not having any inheritance practice okay so let's check the declaration of this surface composable so inside this function we have some other composable if you notice this box is one composable this is one independent unit and this is also a function then this box is having something called layout this layout is also one composable this is also independent unit so all these things together forming one final composable which is called surface so surface if you check this surface is a composable it has some different different type of child composable inside like box is there then box has some kind of layout composable and then this layout composable has something reusable compose node or something so all these things are called composition when some small small units form some larger unit together so we can understand this box layout and all those things are a small small unit which is called composable and we can use these units anywhere we want this leads to our same composable diagram here and inside this for example let's consider this composable parent is surface which we have here so this is one parent composable called surface okay then it has some child composable inside this so if we go to the declaration we have something compositional local provider okay this is one composable then if we go again inside deep so we see there is something called box this is also a composable like this we have multiple child composable inside one parent composable so this concept is called composition that's why we have this name jetpack compose because inside jetpack compose everything is a small independent unit which is called composable and then we form those independent small units child composable together and we can draw anything on the screen with the help of those child composable all right so the next difference is that everything was a view inside our old xml ui system so if we go to our project we can see that this text view is a class and then there is button which is also a class and so on on the other hand inside jetpack compose everything is a composable function so all the view we want to draw are coming out of composable functions so if we check inside our project if we go inside declaration this surface is a composable function and so on this box is also a composable function and similar way layout is also a composable function and there are many more composables and one another major noticeable difference is that inside our old xml project there was two things there was one xml file then there was one activity file but inside jetpack compose code and ui both stays inside our activity itself as we can see here inside our main activity we have all the composable and here itself we are just drawing the screen itself so that was today's video guys i hope i shared something valuable with you today if you like this video please like share and subscribe to my channel and in the next videos of this series i am going to teach you all about jetpack compose and then we will make some beautiful android applications with the help of jetpack compose so stay tuned see you in the next video